In this short video, I'm going to show you how to make relationships work in database management systems. No, 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 not that kind of relationships. Firstly, I have to say the sound recording is not great. It was recorded on a pretty rubbish PC laptop that doesn't have a very good microphone, so I do apologise. If it's a little bit hard to understand, just pay close attention and most of it should be fine. I may even add in some subtitles when it's needed, okay? Okay, so here's a database that has some basic things set up. So we've got a table called TBL Customer. That is the conventional name, TBL capital C Customer. And if we look in our design view, you can see how it's been set up. So this is all the, the field names and the data type for those field names. And yes, since making this, I realise that postcode should actually be a text field, not a number field. That's a complicated debate. We can talk about that another time. And then we go to orders, TBL orders. There's nothing there yet. And shoes, there's the shoes. So this is for a shoe store. One thing that hasn't been done with this database is the relationship hasn't been set up. Let's do that. So we go to database. No, hang on. Before we do that, we have to make sure these tables are closed. Access doesn't like it when you try and set up relationships if the tables are open. So you have to close them first. All right, so let's go to database tools. And here we have the button here called relationships. Click on that. And it'll bring up all the tables that are in our database. So we're going to include all of those. Double click on them, add them in. We've got customer, orders, and shoes. I'm going to put shoes underneath customers, orders off to the side, just to make it easier. Now, each one of these has a primary key called customer ID, order ID, and shoe ID. This one also has customer ID and shoe ID in here, and that's because these are the fields that we're going to link our tables together with. So we're going to connect our primary key to the corresponding foreign key, and this is called the foreign key. And then it'll bring up this thing here. We need to tick on Enforce Referential Integrity. It's going to make sure that the data is the same in both tables. It it'll sort of allows for things not to stuff up. In other words, Referential Integrity asserts a relationship between two tables such that the values in a column on one table must match the values in a column of the second table. Right, so that's interesting. Relationship must be on the same number of fields with the same data types. So it's not letting us create that. So let's explore. So we go back and look at our customer table. Customer ID, what type of field is that? Ah, it's an order number. And the one in orders is not an order number. So we're going to change that to uh, short text. And we'll save that. Then we'll go back to our relationship, the database tools. Here's our relationship. Now I should be able to connect those together. Enforce referential integrity and create. Notice here we've got a one here and an infinity here. This is called a one to many relationship. A one to many relationship. And that means that customer ID, there can only be one of those in the database and in this table. But in this table, customer ID can appear lots of times. There can be lots of records with this customer ID in it because one customer can make lots of orders, but there can't be any more than the one customer the same with the same ID. Same thing with our shoe ID. We're going to connect those two together, shoe to shoe, enforce referential integrity, and create. Okay. So we have a one-to-many relationship here as well. We can only have one shoe in that table with that particular shoe ID but this shoe ID can appear in the orders as many times as you like because someone might order lots of those particular shoes. So if you found that useful, maybe check out one of my other videos and maybe even subscribe.